Now you tell me. <laughs> I was prepared to answer the questions directly, um, which I will do uh, in, in just a moment. But um, when I find myself at the end of a long meeting where uh, so much rich discussion uh, and information has been shared, um, I try to approach it by thinking about how I explain to my girls uh, what I did today. Um, and, I, and I think what I would tell them is um, a group of us tried to figure out how researchers can answer the questions that clinicians and patients have faster and better. Now, who wouldn't want that? But it isn't easy, is it? It's really very complex. Uh, I had a previous boss, George Halverson, who wrote a book called Healthcare Will Not Reform Itself. Um, I'm not sure that the research community can reform ourselves uh, alone either. And the roles in that of both the operational leaders, the clinical leaders, and patients uh, are going to be ce central. We will not be able to figure this out um, on our own. About four years ago at Kaiser Permanente, we totally refreshed our strategy for research in the organization with the aim of becoming an organization that could do exactly what I um, would have described to my girls that we had been talking about for the last two days. Um, and um, immediately took off to try to do the things that would enable us to do that. And John Steiner yesterday mentioned some of the outcomes of that, the creation of the Center for Effectiveness and Safety Research uh, across the whole program uh, to really concentrate that work and build some of the infrastructure we need, headed by Beth McGlynn, um, who's here. Uh, an activist role for the National Research Council, the heads of the research units in the organization that uh, John uh, chairs. Um, the uh, integration of our work with work that is going on in technology in the organization, and Kathy Sherman, our Senior Vice President for Health IT, is, is here with, with us today. Um, we also uh, scaled up our biobanking operation to a national level and more recently uh, created Portal, our uh, network in the PCORnet, um, as steps toward that. But when it came to doing things concretely, we stumbled. Um, Joe Selby had this brilliant idea when the IOM uh, issued its 100 comparative effectiveness research questions that the nation needed to answer, uh, I think it was Joe who said, why don't we find out what are the 100 questions a healthcare system thinks need to be answered? That would be an interesting contrast. Um, and so we set about to do that. In fact, we got 342 questions, I think, uh, from, uh, from chiefs of service and, and other clinical leaders in the organization. Uh, and we began to sift through those and organize them, thinking that this could really be the operational kind of agenda uh, for relevant research in a learning healthcare organization. Um, pretty soon, we discovered that somewhere, something between 25 and 30 percent, I think, of the questions actually already had answers, uh, but the evidence wasn't known uh, or available to the person who was asking the question. That's disturbing in its, in its own light, but, but in retrospect, not too surprising. Um, many of the other questions uh, weren't posed in a way that made them um, easy to answer, or at least for us as researchers to figure out how to answer them. Um, and then when we started off to begin to try to answer some of the questions, we discovered that for many of those questions, um, there was not a researcher who was interested in finding the answer to that question because that isn't what she did or he did. Um, we did um, pick five things and we said, these are going to be our quick hits. We're going to demonstrate it doesn't take two or three or four or five years to answer these kinds of, of critical operational questions. So we had five quick hits. And a year and a half later, uh, I don't think any of the five quick hits were finished. Um, they eventually were. They were faster than we would normally do things. Um, but it's not clear that any care transformation happened from the ability to answer those questions. So uh, I say this not uh, both uh, as being self-critical, but, but more important to say, if it were easy and we could just figure it out, 
uh, it would have happened. It would have happened already, uh, and it hasn't. Uh, it's complex and it's challenging, and we are now looking um, at this set of challenges not from the perspective of what can the formal research centers do to serve the strategic needs of the organization and help transform care. We're looking at what is the full range of analytic capacities that exist in the organization from business intelligence to care analytics to formal research centers and so forth and saying, can we array that in a continuum and then develop a way to triage so that the right question goes to the right analytic unit which has the right tools, the right measures, the right data, the right approach, the right time frame, and can deliver the degree of precision and rigor that is required for whoever asked the question to take an action at the end of the day. That's a much more complex process um, than simply saying somehow can't research answer this question. So uh, that brings me to the, uh, to the CEO. Uh, questions. What, uh, what do CEOs want? What do they care about? Uh, Mary Brainerd uh, said it yesterday, I think. She said, research isn't important to me. Performance improvement is. Um, and that was kind of shocking to some people. So, so number one, uh, and several people have said it in different ways, CEOs want speed and they want uh, relevance uh, in what happens. They are very impatient uh, with what we do and what we have traditionally done. Um, what can CEOs do about infrastructure? Um, perhaps the most critical thing is to create the forum, the mechanism where the questions of the clinicians and patients can be posed and where the researchers can begin and analysts to sort through those and take those on. Creating that forum is essential of people working together on that because the researchers cannot guess at what are the questions that operators and patients have in their minds. And operators and patients can't always pose the question in a way that's readily translated by the researcher. It is going to involve uh, a team sport if we're going to be effective about this. And a CEO can create not only the mechanism but the culture that says that that's important. One thing that we often overestimate what CEOs can do, but one thing CEOs can do very well is change culture in organizations. So changing culture around who's participating in the research, around the necessity to answer the questions that are the burning questions for the organization and the burning question for patients and members is something that a CEO can do. Now, that goes against a huge tradition of, investor, uh, of investigator initiated research. But I believe that paradigm is going to have to change significantly. In terms of the, the question about uh, involving enlisting patients and families as active allies, what can CEOs do? What CEOs can do is insist on it uh, and model it in their, in their own behavior. Um, the CEO who talks to individual members, who talks to individual patients, who reads the, pa the complaints of patients and members who are not well served, that's the kind of CEO that can drive this kind of change in, in research um, as well. Making the case with the board, uh, tools and, and information, um, while cost is persuasive, uh, changing and improving care, I think, is probably more persuasive uh, with, with the board. So unless we can organize our research and analytic capabilities in a way that has a demonstrated impact on improving care and improving health, um, I'm not confident that the, that the cost arguments uh, will be effective. And the reason for that is, as several people have said, the diversion of intellectual capital to things that are not producing change for patients and members um, is a cost that we can't uh, afford uh, to, uh, to uh, to bear anymore. Um, signaling, um, what's the signal? I, th I think probably the principal single is no care improvement, no dollars. Um, that simple. Um, and the barometer, um, I think, is speed. Um, it is speed to results, and it is speed to move from results to change in care uh, and outcomes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. David?